You know how the fake street TV interviews go. This in gold is the brand new iPhone 6 Plus. Premium metal, gorgeous five and a half inch screen, but no physical home button. People will play with it and fall over themselves at how nice it is. But of course, this isn't an iPhone at all, but the budget Honor 5X and it runs Android and it's a quarter the price of Apple's offerings. The similarity in specifications to the iPhone 6 Plus range can't be helped though. From screen to form factor to RAM to camera to home screen interface, the concept of the Honor 5X being the poor man's iPhone 6 Plus isn't that far off the mark. Given the price of £180 all in in the UK and Europe though, that made up tagline is a real compliment to the 5X. How can you get so much smartphone for so little money? Something's got to give, of course, and in this case, it's that a relatively lowly processor is used and niceties like NFC are missing in action. But Emotion UI aside, those are really the only two downsides of what is possibly one of the bargains of the year for someone who lusts after the feel of cold, hard metal in their hands. In this case, it's tinted and brushed aluminium wrapping around the body of the 5X and with slightly chunkier plastic end caps getting the radio signals, that's Wi-Fi, cellular, etc., in and out. The fit and finish isn't completely convincing if Huawei was aiming for seamless metal plastic boundaries, but it's darn good at this price point, and the extra texture of the plastic helps give the top and bottom sections a, a little character of their own. The Honor 5X to my fingers feels a lot more secure in the hand than the recent Apple iPhones, which are slipperier than a bar of soap. The Honor 5X's chamfered edges and ridges all aid grip. They really do. No case required. So you get to enjoy the metal all day long rather than having to hide it away, as happens with most iPhones. The front glass is beautiful, but marred out of the box with a plastic screen protector. Most normal users seem to love these. I always find myself peeling them off. Underneath the plastic is a plain tempered glass display with no oleophobic coating, meaning a less than premium feel and a need to clean the screen of fingerprints daily. On the bottom is a pair of iPhone-esque speaker grills and just as on the iPhone, one is fake. There's just a mono speaker here behind the right grill and it's absolutely average, winning no awards for fidelity at all. But the volume's okay. This is maximum volume, bit of dire straits. It's not terrible either. It's average, it's befitting the price. Also down at the bottom, the charging and data port is micro USB, slightly bizarrely, given that it's now 2016. But Honor is nothing if not conservative and quite a few of the 5X's design choices. I dare say USB Type-C will be in the Honor 6X in 2017. <laughs> On the left hand side are twin pop-out slots for nano SIM and micro SD plus micro SIM, giving you plenty of options in terms of expansion and compatibility. Around the back, though, is where things get interesting. You do not normally get a metal build and a fast fingerprint sensor at this price point. And the sensor here isn't just to unlock the device. It's also a trackpad and can respond to gestures such as here, dragging down the notification shade at any point, and moving back in the interface, going back to the home screen or popping up the multitasking carousel all without touching the screen at all. And if you want to get really advanced, you can program it to unlock and launch specific apps upon the touch of a specific finger. For example, here, my middle finger brings up the camera application, a super little feature. And it makes you wonder why other phones with fingerprint sensors can't do exactly the same thing. Honor are setting a high standard in this area. Above the sensor is the main camera, 13 megapixels, F over 2.0 aperture, and pretty good to see some of the samples here. Uh, HDR helps a lot, but is somewhat hidden on the main hamburger menu with the main shooting modes concentrating on good food, beauty, time lapse. <laughs> beauty did wonders on my wrinkles, but I'd still much rather have an auto HDR function. Still, the results are super at this price point, with just the usual moving subjects and low light being an issue. Night shots are surprisingly good too, thanks to multiple captures being grabbed, auto-aligned, and then used to improve detail and reduce noise. We live in an age of digital photography where clever software and powerful chips can often take the place of bigger and more powerful sensors. The front camera is pretty good too, with a very cool panoramic selfie mode that makes you want to head to the nearest tourist attraction and get snapping. Inside is a Snapdragon 616 and a full 2 gig of RAM, now the minimum for Android in 2016. And the Honor 5X performs perfectly well for the man in the street. 
coming from the likes of the Nexus 5 and Nexus 6 and other flagships, there's a notable lack of snappiness, but any potential buyer of the 5X, including you for your teenager, for example, will be more than happy. Emotion UI 3.1 has been polished up since I last used it, and it's now very colourful, very iOS-like, which again was probably the idea behind it. Every application lives somewhere on the home screens uh, in the dock, pages or in folders, again mimicking iOS and the iPhone, though the lack of a traditional app drawer never really bothered me. To be honest, the very need for a separate application drawer is subjective, and I have no problems at all with the Emotion UI on this front. Also somewhat controversially, all icons are artificially embedded in a squircle, a square circle, which looks odd, but it does at least make third-party application icons consistent with all the built-ins. Just don't tell the developers who probably laboured for hours crafting their pixels. The notification shade is interesting as entries have been grouped and sorted chronologically in a more obvious way than on stock Android. Very nicely done, Huawei. I mean, uh, Honor. Multiple items within a notification group, for example, emails, are bundled together and tagged with the time of the first occurrence, which is a little counterintuitive. You glance at your notifications and see that you had a whole bunch of emails two hours ago and nothing since, when in fact they've been arriving steadily and the last one was a few minutes ago. The traditional drop-down settings pane is off in a tab and includes a torch and a toggle for mobile data. I couldn't find a way of bringing this down directly, i.e. with a swipe on the right or two fingers, so there's another little fix for Huawei and Honor to code into an update. There's a barrage of UI enhancements which are turned off by default and which we've seen on other phones before, which are nice to have in one place. Double tap to wake, uh, slightly pointless given that you've usually got to pick the phone up and authenticate though. Customizable navigation controls, i.e. reorder them to match the order of your last Android phone. <laughs> and screen off gestures, for example here, M for music, again foiled by the need to authenticate. <laughs> Well, that takes away the edge of the uh, convenience of the system. OK Google works from anywhere and aside from a few app duplicates, for example, browser and Chrome calendar and uh, Google calendar, things progress much as on any other Android smartphone. Under the hood, possibly the most controversial aspect of Emotion UI is the emphasis placed on limiting what's running and preserving battery life. Now, this is undoubtedly to help the target market, regular users who have no idea whatsoever about RAM applications and how to optimize things. So Huawei does the job for them. By default, the Honor App 5X comes up in a smart power saving mode with the processor and network use being managed by the OS for best battery life. And there's the concept of protected apps, those which are manually explicitly allowed to run in the background when the screen is off. Every other application not on the list has its activities largely curtailed by default when the 5X is nominally off and in your pocket. While a power user and Android purist like myself is suspicious of such heavy-handed behaviour, I can't help but think this will be a huge help to the target market. Think, my first smartphone, or I really wanted an iPhone, but this is rather good and left enough money over for a holiday, and so on. And if someone finds that a particular social application or whatever isn't running in the background enough and not providing updates, it's easy enough to add it here in the protected list. If this was a Nexus or a Moto X, then I'd be up in arms about app management in this way, but it's not. An Emotion UI's choices have to be taken in context. An ultra power saving mode is provided, turning off all but the basics in the manner Samsung champion that this doesn't seem to auto dial back the screen brightness, i.e. the backlight and therefore doesn't completely help eke out the last few percent of battery in quite the way Huawei wanted. As often happens with budget or mid-range phones, this is stuffed with licensed extras in order to help pay the bills. In this case, a raft of game loft demos plus WPS Office and a whole bunch of Huawei and Honor specific support apps and site shortcuts. Mirror, magnifier and torch are all camera or LED related, really well done, and should mean that the user doesn't have to go off looking in the Play Store for these basics, while Huawei's phone manager suite is basically the equivalent of the hated Clean Master, often bundled with cheaper handsets, yet better integrated here and not so annoying. The usual RAM clearing and temporary file deletion are present along with a bunch of other useful settings. Even if the biggest tip I could give new users the 5X would be, don't worry about RAM, you've got plenty. Oh, and uh, go off and buy a nice big micro SD card. There's also a theme engine with support for backgrounds, transitions, icons and so on, though only six alternatives are available at the moment. I'm assuming that a store option will arrive at some point. I mentioned the lack of NFC above. This may sound like a geeks only specification bullet point, 
but it's a vital part of Android Pay or whatever mass market contactless payment system takes off. And without it, your smartphone's going to be out of luck, along with a groundswell of other Chinese designed phones, admittedly. I still think it's short sighted of Huawei and Honor to miss this out there. You just know that whichever family member you give the Honor 5X2 in six months time, they'll say, Daddy, how can I pay for things with my phone like my friends? And you'll have to let them down gently. Ultimately, though, it's impossible not to give the Honor 5X a qualified thumbs up for the target market. It's iPhone like premium build, yet Android and mass market. It's secure and fast enough and foolproof enough, and it doesn't cost the earth. It's official in Western markets uh, at dramatically less than most of the competition. No one watching this show is going to lust after the Honor 5X for themselves, but you might very well be eyeing it up for your significant other or teenage kids, and they'll thank you for it.